All right, one of the core pillars that I talk about all the time on this channel that you need to learn if you want to become a pen tester is web pen testing. That is one of the most important areas because there's so many web apps that companies have and when you get hired on, there's a very good chance that you're going to at least be working on some web app penetration tests. So I talk a lot about how to learn these skills from a hands-on perspective, but I wanted to shed some light on how I would recommend learning some of the knowledge and theory-based stuff, right? Because I think that doesn't get oh, enough recognition just in general. Well, one of the biggest hacks that you can use that I feel is very underrated, not enough people are talking about this, and that is looking at real-world reports that are out there. And the nice thing about web pen testing is there's a lot of information freely available out there, a lot of reports you can easily find because of things like bug bounties. So we're going to look at a bug bounty report from Hacker One and see how we can use these to gain insight on real-world uh, findings that people are actually finding on real applications out there. I mean, this is as real world as it gets, right? This is an actual application. I'm sure everyone is familiar with stuff like GitLab and GitHub, right? And so these are these are big uh, vulnerabilities. This one here paid out like an almost $14,000 bounty. And before we get into this, I really want to drive home that this should be a part of the learning in addition to the hands-on learning you want to do. If you really want to be as efficient as possible in learning and leveling up, what I would recommend is to employ this along with uh, hands-on as well. And when it comes to hands-on, I am very excited to announce my Hack This Server Challenge that will be launching on March 6th absolutely for free. It's a three-day challenge where I've deployed a vulnerable server out there on the internet. You have three days to try to hack it and get the flag. And the first one to get the flag will get some free AirPod Pros. Uh, so... Without further ado, let's dive into this report here. This is just one that I found, but you could, you know, pick any arbitrary report. Uh, if you go through Hacker One and some of the different sites out there, uh, there's Bug Crowd. There's uh, there's a ton, right? But just looking at this one, this will give us uh, some insight, right? Because these are interesting findings. Like this one here, very interesting. Chances are you won't come across this exact type of issue on something like Try Hack Me and stuff like that. Because in the real world, you're often, you know, putting multiple, you know, chaining multiple vulnerabilities together. And that's what you see here. Both a stored XSS along with a content security policy bypass. And this is through the scoped labels color feature uh, in these applications. So this guy says the stored XSS with CSP bypass via labels color has been mitigated in GitLab version 15.3.2. But it's not enough because it missed the case of the scoped label. So this is one thing that's really important. A lot of times a bug will be found by a company and they'll patch it in one area. But if that vulnerability exists in one area in the application, there's a pretty decent chance that it might also exist somewhere else in that application. And especially because these companies are constantly trying to, you know, create the next version of their product, add more features to it. And they're really focused a lot on the business side. A lot of times they're not going to do the most thorough checks and go back and see, okay, is this vulnerability anywhere else in the application? They're just going to fix the issue at hand because that's what they had the request for. That was the security requirement, right? And then once they fulfilled that requirement, they just went on to adding more features and stuff, right? And so a lot of times these other ones get missed. So this is another advantage to if you're reading these reports, if you want to find zero days, if you want to find end days, things like that, you could find a lot of them actually by reading reports like this because let's say you learn about a vulnerability in a particular application. Well, you could go and look on that application in other parameters and other areas of it to see does that same issue exist in another place that they um, didn't fix yet and didn't notice yet, right? So that's a strategy that some people use to uh, to find zero days and things like that you could do. Uh, so here's some of the reproduction steps. So the scope labels are available in GitLab Premium. So uh, they need a premium account, but luckily you can use a free trial for that. And by the way, uh, this is marked as resolved. It's probably patched now, I'm sure. Uh, but in this version, if you get access to um, these versions of 
uh, GitHub server, I think, and GitLab, then you could do it um, to reproduce it. But that's not really the point of this video. The point is just understanding how these issues can come about. And so you get your access token from GitLab. Um, you can, he has the URL linked in here. And you create a new API token uh, with an API scope. GitHub does not allow you to create arbitrary label colors. You can find the attachment uh, in the attachment a dummy GitHub server, which he set a new label. You can see the this is how you scope a label with the two colons here. And then in the color field, right? That's in the name field. The color field is where he was able to find this vulnerability, um, able to inject into that some arbitrary JavaScript code. So it looks like he's doing some kind of escape here of a tag. Um, and then he's setting, uh, he's writing his own HTML here uh, with, in the input title, uh, the script tags here. This is the actual piece of the payload that is going to execute the JavaScript uh, to pop an alert box with the domain and a lot of and, and this is good that he's using document domain because what that allows you to do is when you do get the uh, arbitrary javascript to run in that alert box pops it'll give you more information it'll give you clarity on is it actually affecting their servers or is it just uh on on your side right so this is a very good technique here using document domain as the pop-up, because uh, that'll give you clarity on if this is a real issue you should report or not. And uh, he mentions in order to reproduce it, he has a GitHub server that he is hosting on his own VPS, so something like DigitalOcean, Linode, uh, something like that, right? And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's, it's very simple and straightforward. Uh, and then you, you just run the command here, and you get the pop-up. And it says, you know, since we control the label color, we can create a stored XSS. So, yeah, you control the label color. This is stored some uh, actually by the application. So every time that thing is uh, is used by the app and rendered on the screen, the JavaScript will run. So in that way, it is a stored cross-site scripting attack. And it's actually able to bypass the content security policy because they're trusting the stuff from GitHub. There's an integration between GitHub and GitLab. That's another thing that was very interesting about this vulnerability is that, um, let's see here. It, it seems to, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, you're combining the two applications together, Git, uh, GitLab and GitHub, which by the way are two separate application so this really shows the creativity that they went through to, to find this issue right uh because you know usually it's uh you're just interacting with one application in order to find one of these bugs but in this case it involves multiple different applications here so since we control the label color we can create stored cross-site scripting with a content security bypass on another place uh, rather than the page that lists the labels such as an issue or a merge request of another project using the GitLab uh, specific references. So we have some example links here, um, which you know proceed with caution, uh, of course, when it comes to these. And uh, well, it looks like I have to sign up for an account, uh, which I don't have at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, so I can't uh, I can't test it out. But hey, definitely go ahead and uh, and go to the link, and uh, you can you can try it out. Of course. At your own risk, uh, visiting the uh, the links, as they say. Uh, but let's take a look at the impact here because you want to go a step further than just reading about the issue. You want to understand the impact as well, right? Because that, especially if you want to become a pen tester, you need to start thinking about things like impact, right? So in general, stored cross-site scripting with constant security bypass will allow an attacker to execute arbitrary actions on behalf of the victims at the client side. So with that being said, let's see what else we should consider here. So he'd also like to clarify some other metrics in CVSS. Okay, so he used CVSS. So this guy, you could tell this guy is definitely and okay, cool. I can visit this page. This guy is definitely more of an experienced tester here, uh, mentioning stuff like that, right? CVSS, by the way, is something I would highly recommend any of you guys who want to become pen testers to learn. It will help you figure out how to rate the vulnerabilities you find, how to score them, right? And all the things that you can, uh, you should be considering 
uh, when you are determining how critical a vulnerability is. So he kind of explains why he scored it the way he did. So he says that it's a low attack complexity because stored XSS on a page is part of a user's normal workflow. Um, so he said it's easy to exploit. And he says the attacker, the attacker is logged out, so no, priv- uh, no privileges are required in this case, right? And access tokens, runner tokens, private repository, the XSS allows to execute any REST API on behalf of the victim uh, to get almost immediately re- uh, to almost immediately be able to register a new account, uh, and then here you see. Uh, I, I think this is uh, availability low. This uh, store X, stored XSS with CSP bypass can easily create DOS. Yeah, so you can create a DOS attack by exhausting the resources. So. He says that, you know, there's a low impact to availability. And here, if you're not familiar with the abbreviations, you can check this uh, this page here. Uh, and it will outline all of them. And, uh, oh yeah, I think I skipped over this, but C is for confidentiality, which is a high impact. So yeah, that's why he scored it the way he he scored it there. And uh, the the main takeaway from this is you see just how he went about finding that and where in the application he found it and how it came out. Um, and, and by the way, it might be a woman, so I apologize if I'm saying he and, it, and it's she, but uh, just a uh, shorthand a little force of habit here. But what you can see is the, the general methodology and the thought process behind it and also how a vulnerability, a real-world vulnerability sprung up. So, yeah, definitely implement this alongside your hands-on learning. Hope this one helped. Let me know in the comment section below, and I will see you guys on the videos on screen right now if you want to get into some more content.